What if your image processing workflow worked the way that you want it to? And what if the first step didn't require multiple steps to complete? And what if you could do more than one thing in your first single step? So unless you like your gradient maps to look like ancient cartography, which, hey, that might be a thing, stick around. I got something I'm gonna show you. My name is Doug, this is Astro AF. So in Serial, maybe you found yourself jumping into another application or using the sequence tool in Serial in order to just simply crop a set of images. So I do this all the time and it's part of a workflow pain point for me that I decided that I wanted to do something about. I've done it the more times I care to admit. I might jump out of Serial and go to another application to, to do the cropping. And then later on, if I bring in additional images, it's problematic because I have to have the exact same crop. And so in Serial, I have to rebuild the sequence in order to do that, apply a new crop, which might be just slightly smaller than what you did before. And anyway, um, it's, it's just not ideal. And so what I wanted was a way to crop images consistently and repeatedly, and even if it's at a later date when I want to add more images. So anyway, let me introduce you to something. Since Serial requires sequences, uh, so you have to go in and create a conversion and name the sequence and then go into the sequence tab and run the sequence and apply the crop in the sequence to all the images in the sequence. And then later on, if you wanted to bring some narrowband into your LRGB, for example, and maybe it might be a week later and you need to crop those exactly the same as what your original masters were, well, you're gonna have to rebuild your sequence and do it again. And I didn't wanna to have to do that. I just wanted to be able to apply a crop over and over again without having to go through that process. And additionally, I, I wanted to be able to to do batch cropping if I wanted to, and lots of files. And so when working with multiple calibrated fits like we do in pre-processing workflows, uh, you know, you can hit this wall. And as I mentioned, especially when you need to bring in new masters into your project, uh, such as narrowband into your, into your RGB stuff. So cropping is critical. It's the first step. It needs to be the first step to remove the stacking artifacts because otherwise that can cause problems like with background extraction and gradient maps and it can just kind of escalate down through your whole process if you can't crop that stuff out initially. And for me, that, that causes a lot of problems and a lot of extra work later in the project. So, so I built a script. It's called AF Multicrop. And it's a Python script that runs in Serial, and you can get it now. So I wanted to tell you more about it in this script, uh, and I'll, I'll go over the features here in a minute, but you don't have to create a conversion and go into a sequence or anything like that. No, you get a nice little GUI dialog that allows you to do exactly what you want, and I'm excited to show it to you here. So let's have a quick look. All right, first, I wanted to start here in Serial, and I'm in one dot. 4.0 beta 2 and the the beta 2 has the new features for scripts which adds in like the python scripts it also adds a script repository so uh, getting the scripts into serial is really easy you can uh, simply go over to your preferences and get scripts or you can actually go into the preferences menu to get the same place and then this brings up the scripts tab automatically for you here. And you can go through and select whatever scripts that you would like to install. So there's all kinds of different stuff in here. A notable though, I'd like to call out Rich over at DSA. He's got quite a few scripts. He's been really busy here. And I've also, in astronomy, NAS has a script. It's in GitHub right now, and he is got it forked and in for a merge request. And hopefully we'll see his script here soon. It's a, a serial mosaic script. But anyway, I'll have some links in the description for DSA and for an astronomy. As far as installing scripts, it couldn't be easier. So we could go in here. I know uh, DSA's got a script that I want to grab, which is, let me go through the star reduction script yeah right here so i'm just going to select that and then i'm also going to go up and i'm going to grab mine which is af multi-crop it's in the utility category and so i'll go ahead and select it 
and then just click apply. So now it's already loaded. So it's grabbed those. We can come into the Python scripts. And now I've got DSA, star reduction, and AF multicrop available. Okay, that's it as far as for installation. So the, the next thing is just using it and the the way that uh, that I have this set up. So you need to always recommend it going and set your home directory. So I've got a project here and I've created a processing directory and I'm gonna make that my home directory. What I'd like to point out is I've already loaded some final images in here and that's because the way that I work, I don't touch my original masters. So I grab them, I copy them into a processing directory, and that way my originals are untouched. I've got a backup of them if I need to ever uh, go back and start over or do something different. And sometimes I revisit projects in different ways and things like that. So, so these will be my working images. So I'm gonna select processing here as my home directory, and we can verify that we're in processing up here at the top. And then I want to Go ahead and open an image. So from image, I'll open this one. And we can bring it out a linear or bring it into an auto stretch so we can see it. And obviously this is a, a blue. And you can see around the edges here, I've got some stacking artifacts that I want to get rid of. So I'm simply going to go ahead and create a crop frame, which is, this is the first thing that I always do anyway. The thing is, is that what I would have to do is go in to conversion here, add these files, run the conversion, get a brand new set of files, then go over into the sequence, assign the sequence, and then add the cropping to selection, export the sequence to get my cropped files. And and that workflow, I mean, it works great. And uh, it's just, it's not the workflow that I want to do. So my workflow is to come over here to the scripts menu. And I'm going to open up AF multi-crop. Okay. And I get my dialog that comes up. And as you can see, my crop X and Y are pre-populated, and that's because I already created the crop frame. If I didn't create a crop frame, it would ask me to do so. So right now, I'm set to my home directory, which is processing, which is correct, but I can browse and go and choose any directory that I want. But processing is what I want, so I'm gonna choose that. So it's gonna grab any files that are in this directory, any fits files. I'll choose that. Now, it automatically defaults to create a crop directory. You can change this right here. Just type a different directory name if you want, and it'll do that. You can browse and put it somewhere completely different if you'd like. I'm just going to use this. It'll create that directory for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, run the crop. All right, and so it tells me four files were cropped and saved to my crop directory. Didn't skip any, so that's good. If there's anything you want to see, the log file over here, I do have uh, logging, and uh, click OK, and uh, that's it. So now, if I go over and I open up an image in the crop file, we'll take a look at this. I can open up the same image, and you can see that it has been cropped, so we don't have those stacking artifacts around the edges anymore. So let's look at this again. I'm going to go back and open one of my originals. Now, we don't ever overwrite the originals. All right. And then I'm going to open up the script again. And notice that I don't have any crop values here. So... If you load an image and don't have a crop yet, that's fine. You can go ahead and, and uh, apply your crop frame like so. And then you can ask it to get crop from frame. And now it loads those in. Okay, so that's handy. It doesn't, you don't have to have your crop frame ahead of time. You can do it after. Now I'm going to save this crop. So I'm going to save it as you can do it whatever you want. And this is so that it can be reused later. I'm going to save it into the crop directory and I'm going to call it 3948 by 2654. Crop. Okay. And we'll save that. So crop settings are going to be saved 
as that file name. And then when I run the crop, cool. All right, so now that I have the, uh, the saved cropped, I can go ahead and uh, load it for the next one. So now notice I do not have a crop frame here. And actually, I'm going to reload the original uh, image. So we'll, we'll load this one, not the cropped one. OK, and then I can say load saved crop. And if I go over into the crop menu, now I've got this 3948 by 2654 crop file. OK, and I'll open it. And so now we can, it, it came up behind there, but crop settings are loaded. All right, and so it just loaded those settings for me automatically. And then I can run this crop again. And that's all there is to it. So now I have a full set. So if I went into open, okay, it didn't skip any. And so now if I go into the crop directory, I can work with my individual files. All right, so another feature of this is being able to crop huge batches of files. So I wanted to show you that. So I'm going to switch over my home directory, and we're going to go into temp. And oh, I'm sorry, not temp. We're going to go into test. Okay, and I have a bunch of files here. I, I think there's 250 or, or more, okay? And we're going to do a big batch crop here. So home is in the test, and I'm going to go ahead and open one of those images. All right, and we'll go ahead and launch, and we'll go ahead and launch the script. Okay, great. And so I'm going to go ahead and... Set a crop frame. And I'm going to make this a little big because what I have in here is, if this works out, I have some images that are actually already cropped smaller than what my crop frame is now. And I wanted to show you how it handles that because that, that's not a valid image to crop if the image is smaller than your crop frame. So it will actually skip them. So I can go ahead and Get the crop frame, and it loads up. And now we're going to run crop. Now, I'm not going to do it this time, but there is a cancel menu here, and this will shut down the cropping process. So if you need to stop the a batch process, you can hit cancel, and it will it will kill that process. It'll let you know how many images were cropped and skipped, and it won't stop until the current image that it's in process of cropping is completed. So uh, it may ask you to wait, but it will stop immediately after it's done processing the current image being cropped. So if we run this, and this will take, oh, uh, I think this will take uh, 25 to 30 seconds or so. Okay, so it finished successfully, and uh, we cropped 206 files, which were saved to the cropped directory under, under test. It skipped 17 files. So you can actually come over here to files, and it might be easier when you have a large volume like this to, you could scroll and maybe see the log difference, maybe, if they're skipped. You can't search for your logs. It's reading. Yeah, uh, uh, not easy to find over here, but what you can do is export down here with this export button that's at the bottom. I think my my head's in the way right now, but at the bottom of the um, of the console here, there's a little download button, and you can download that, and then you can search your log in a text file that way. Uh, much easier than trying to find stuff, you know, when you have a lot of logs like what we do here. But each one of these logs is, is say, telling you what it did for each uh, ind individual file. And we just cropped 206 of them and skipped 17. So in that process, I could have gone ahead and canceled it. I'm not going to necessarily show you that. That's not that interesting. It will simply cancel. It'll tell you how many it cropped. It'll tell you how many it skipped before it canceled. And then it'll, it'll shut down and stop the process.
So yeah, so AF Multicrop is available in the Serial Core Scripts repository, and you can install it as I just showed you there. Uh, you can get it through the Preferences Scripts and go ahead and add it through the repository settings. You can remove and and uh, choose other scripts. And like I mentioned, you know, you got Rich over at Deep Space Astro has got scripts in there, and Naz with Nastronomy has got a script that's available over on his GitHub right now, and it's working. He's doing some some final polish on it and has a merge request in so hopefully we'll see that as part of the scripts package and serial core here soon uh, it'd be pretty neat you know with the astro crew having uh, three contributions to serial is a lot of fun so um, hey if this saved you some hassle or you like the script and you think you'll find it useful and improves your workflow hey give a like and subscribe i would really appreciate that and hopefully the script does help you out and you enjoy it give it a try you can always uh, uninstall it if it doesn't work the way that you want it to and uh, but i think it uh, is really great i know it it does some things and, and is motivated by some other applications and the way that they handle their cropping with uh, being able to apply a you know dynamic crop to other objects you know to other images uh, save the, the the crop and and then reapply it later and that's the kind of thing that I really wanted to have in Cyril and uh, and that just makes me uh, be able to stay in the application not leave and go out you know to another application I can keep working and focused within the the, the serial platform and uh, that makes things a lot more efficient. So uh, I'll have a companion article uh, for this over on my blog at astrof.space. I will have a link in that in the description. And thank you so much for watching and clear skies. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF.